Hey folks, so Google just announced the multi-agent open source SDK for building agents. And right off the bat, I see a lot of similarities between the Autogen framework, which I have contributed to and used extensively over the last two years. And I think the first reaction here is that it's exciting to see frameworks sort of converge over some similar or some standardized uh, developer experience and abstractions. And so in this video, I'll mostly walk through the documentation for the Google um, Agent SDK um, compared to Autogen. Um, I'll start out with similarities and then I'll sort of explore differences. So essentially what they do really, really well and where there's room for improvement. Um, let's get started. Okay, so whenever I sort of try out new multi-agent or agentic SDKs, one of the first things I do is to implement a Hello World agent uh, task. And so what we want to achieve here is we want a single agent, we want to give it access to an LM, and we want to give it access to a single tool, a calculator tool, and then we're going to ask it a simple computational question. What is the result of some computation? And the ex expectation is that um, Using the LLM, you know, we get a tool call, the tool call gets executed and we get the result. So let's take a look at what that looks like for the Autogen Agent Chat API and compare that really fast with the Google ADK um, API. So we have a few uh, imports. I think the fast summary here is that on the Autogen side, um, there's a high level abstraction called an assistant agent. And on the Google ADK side, there's the LLM agent. Um, a good thing is that both of them uh, support um, the use of Python functions as tools that can be directly given to the agent. And so we have the exact same uh, calculator function here um, across both um, across both uh, uh, examples. Um, and then we also have like on the on the Autogen side, we define a model client, a termination condition to just determine when the task end runs. We have a team, which is around Robin group chat. And then um, we then ask the question, we give the team a task uh, directly. Um, on the Google ADK side, there's just a little bit more of more setup. So we have to define an app name, a user ID, a session ID. And we define something called an in-memory session service. Um, I think part of the reasons all of this plumbing needs to be set up is because um, the Google ADK is also deeply integrated into Google Cloud, so the Vertex um, AI agent engine. And so ideally, you probably will have um, Vertex AI-based uh, session uh, implementations. Once that is done, uh, the way you define an agent is fairly standard. You give it a model. The agent has a name, which should be an identifier. Uh, there's a description and then there's an instruction, which is mostly just a system message or a system prompt. And then similar to Autogen, you give it a list of tools and the agent should be able to use those tools. Next, you define a runner. Um, the closest thing to that is the team and um, and then you define your inputs, which is uh, um, in this case, it's just a text message. Um, and then finally, you sort of call runner.run task um, give it the user ID, a session ID, and then you sort of loop through the events or messages that come out of that, and then you can print a response. And so that's a really good fast overview of like the hello world that say for the, for um, a Google ADK. Um, and that's a quick comparison to what it, uh, what the agent chat high level API in Autogen sort of looks like. Okay, so let's walk through the documentation for the Google um, Agent as a key. And so the first thing is to go through getting started installation. So installation is pretty straightforward. Pip install Google ADK. Um, they have a quick start example where um, you define a few files. Um, in this case, um, you define like uh, an init.py file, you define an agent.py file. And here it's really similar to the example I just walked through. You define a tool. Um, you define another tool, Python functions, you define an agent here, uh, which is the LLM agent, I believe. Um, this agent is just a wrapper for the LLM agent underneath. Um, give it a name, give it a model, a description, an instruction, and you give it a set of tools. And then right in the same folder, you set up some environment variable variables. And um, once you've done all of that, there are several ways to sort of run, um, to run um, the tool or to run the agent. And you could do that using some a bundled like web SDK. Um, you could run things in the terminal and essentially you could sort of interact with the agent uh, using the standard input, or you could sort of run um, an API endpoint. So I haven't tried this a lot, but I tried the dev um, SDK spins up a web interface that kind of looks like this. 
Um, so um, you could spin it up. In this case, I have like an agent that's sort of configured with one of the standard um, built-in tools, which is Google search. And I might ask things like, um, what is the latest, I don't know, news on the Google Cloud next event? That sort of thing. And essentially underneath the system might uh, do a few things. Um, probably call a tool, parse the result using the LLM and sort of return return the output. So let's see if how token streaming works here. Let's say again, ask this exact same question. What is the latest news on Google Cloud events? Okay, we see things being streamed in chunks. And on the left, there are a few, there's some, um, there's some, it's just a bit of uh, introspection uh, tools here that sort of show, um, that like a Google search tool is called, um, let's see, all of the model requests that are here. Um, and let's see a response, okay? Yep. If we go to the next one, basic search agent. Okay, request and the response. Okay, not too bad. Um, and essentially all of this gets bundled, pretty good experience. So you run ADK web and you get like an interface that looks like this. Um, not as sophisticated as what you might see on um, a tool like Autogen Studio. Um, okay, so the next thing I thought was really well done with um, the Google Agents ADK was the support for uh, common multi-agent patterns. And so for example, there's a concept of an LLM agent, which is mostly an LLM agent where control flow is mostly driven by um, an LLM. And so the LLM does things like call tools, uh, transfers, uh, logic or control across multiple agents. Um, next, they have the concept of workflow agents where the flow of control is a bit more deterministic. And so they have thing of something called a sequential agent, um, a parallel agent, a loop agent. And then they also have the idea of uh, custom agents. And so mostly, um, I think the LLM agents sort of map really well to the team abstractions and all the gen. So things like a selector group chat where you have a bunch of agents in the selector group chat container and an LLM sort of determines which agent sort of speaks next. Um, similarly, the workflow agents, uh, you sort of can implement things like that um, using the Autogen uh, low-level core API where you define exactly um, what message gets emitted by a specific agent and what uh, other agents can sort of consume that specific uh, message. And so by composing this sort of message passing abstraction, you, you get like a sequential parallel uh, kind of agent. And then of course you can sort of customize uh, your agent uh, quite carefully. So I thought that this was well done. Um, they also have some good examples on how to sort of compose agents into uh, multiple uh, multi-agent hierarchies. And so that was well done. Um, and then the final similarity here has to do with uh, tooling. And so I think I thought like um, the concept of a function tool, um, mostly just a Python function, um, is really well done. Um, and it sort of aligns with how Autogen sort of explores this. Um, there's also support for a set of built-in tools. And so for example, you have things like a Google search tool, um, code execution tool, data retrieval tool from Vertex AI. Um, there's also support for Langchain tools, which we also have in, um, in Autogen. Um, there's also the idea of um, MCP tools. And so the approach again here is really similar to sort of how we um, expose uh, MCP tools. Again, here, what they do is that they sort of extract the list of tools using an MCP tools abstraction. And that same set of tools can then be passed to um, an agent. And so now let's get to some of the differences. And so I think I'll start up with what it does really, really well. And so one of the first things I thought was really well done here is they have a clear, strong deployment story. And so you can easily um, sort of take whatever you've built here and deploy it in the agent engine, which they've introduced in Vertex AI, or just have it container containerized in sort of deployed in Cloud Run, uh, really, really good. Um, there's also the idea of callbacks. And so essentially what happens here is that there's, they have the sort of um, hooks into agent 
execution so things like before agent callback so this can be executed before your agent gets run um before model callback and so before you sort of run a model call um before tool callback and then after all of these things and so you can sort of leverage hooks like this to do very interesting things like um implement guard rules um manage states um sort of modify the flow of control so i thought this was this was really well done um they also have um an initial implementation of uh, agentic evaluation. So all of this reminds me of Origin Bench, um, but I think the developer experience here is sort of well done and they have early metrics like things like exact match, in order match, precision recall. And there's a bunch of um, uh, some good mental models about how to evaluate an agent. And so there's like the idea of evaluating agents um, around the final response and also evaluating agents around uh, how well they sort of do things like use tools or things like the expected intermediate uh, responses. So I thought this was also quite well done. So those are like the three things I thought that were well done. Um, some of the things I felt like um, could still be improved. And so for example, um, well, there's the concept of a runtime um, and there are runners, I think, um, it's not really clear how all of these can be um, extended or scaled to the sort of um, distributed runtime environments that Origin sort of provides. Um, um, it's probably there, I just haven't been able to see it from the from the SDK. So most of the examples I saw has to do with mostly just agents that live on the same machine. Um, and interestingly, um, they also provide, I think also announced today was the agent to agent protocol. And so maybe that's how um, that gets done. Um, the other thing that wasn't that clear was uh, clear abstractions for task management. And so, for example, in Autogen, there's a concept of termination conditions. So, for example, an entire run or loop can be terminated when an agent mentions a specific string or based on token count or based on some sort of timeout or based on some other type of resource budget. Um, just wasn't clear how this was can be accomplished here. And then things like low-code tooling and so things like Autogen Studio, um, the ability to sort of de design uh, multi-agent systems or multi-agent configurations, um, rapidly test and run them um, right in the UI, um, sort of evaluate or visualize the flow of control across um, across each of these agents. It's just something that's uh, um, still not not done really really well yet. Um, still something that's in progress, uh, at least for the for the. Um, for the agent, um, for the Google ADK, and then similar to this, um, the idea of a, <clears throat> the idea of a dec of declarative specifications. And so right now in you know, Autogen, um, you can sort of convert each of your multi agents, but your teams, your models, all of that can be represented declaratively, and that way you can sort of share these configurations, version them, uh, deploy them quite easily. Um, something that might be useful to have in the ADK. And then finally, observability and tracing. So Autogen uses open telemetry underneath. It just wasn't clear how to do that with um, Autogen, um, with the Google ADK. Okay, so in this video, we sort of looked at um, the Google Agent Developer Kit, sort of looked at a couple of examples, uh, the documentation, um, a hello world example. And I think my overall impression is that a lot of thought went into this. Um, and it's pretty well done. And I think it can be um, just a strong contender in terms of like expressing uh, multi-agent systems. Um, it was exciting to see some of the design choices made um, in other chains that have also mirrored here. Um, and then in terms of how all of this plays out, I think the whole space of multi-agent systems is still very, very early. Um, but I personally think um, all of the good ideas in terms of interoperability across multiple frameworks. And so, um, Today, Google also announced the agent to agent protocol. So I think an increasing focus in sort of um, having protocols that enable um, communication between agents implemented across different environments, different frameworks, perhaps different programming languages is something that we will probably continue to see going forward. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed this video, um, found it useful mostly, and I'll catch you in the next one.